Good morning. It's a Tuesday morning, 6.36 a.m. on the East Coast of the United States, May 24th, 2022. So, uh, yesterday, one of the things that I talked about was the uh, sensory, uh, is that what it's called? Sensory lexicon? Oh, for heaven's sakes. Uh, yes, the sensory lexicon. Okay. Um, the, the rural coffee research organization um, has decided upon, which gives like a common language for describing coffees. Okay, so here's a fact that's good to know. When, and this is why you should consider not having a lid on your coffee if you really want to taste it. So when you are eating or drinking anything, your nose and your taste buds are actually involved together. Also, there's an area in like the back of your throat leading up to your nasal passage area where um, aromas or fumes or <laughs> I'm not quite sure of what you, just stuff from what you've eaten or drunk sort of comes back up a little bit and it also affects your experience of what you're tasting. Um, so you don't want to have your nose left out of it by having a covered cup of coffee. I mean, unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, anyway, so these uh, flavors and aromas and everything are called hints and notes, okay? So today, I got my order. You know, it's funny, I ordered my new Nespresso coffees, Paris, Rio de Janeiro, and what's the other one? Oh, Istanbul. And um, I got a, uh, an email from Nespresso, you know, we processed your order. Then I got an email the next day saying, sorry, there's gonna be a delay in your order. And then later that day, the order showed up on my front porch, so. <laughs> it was a very short delay. Anyhow, so um, Nespresso, I have realized, does not really use um, the descriptions, the strict descriptions that are given in the World Coffee Research um, Sensory Lexicon. But that's okay. It's like, for example, on the Rio de Janeiro, it says that there's, um, let's see, herbal notes of rosemary and thyme and sandalwood and walnut aromas, um, something like that. I know it said sandalwood, walnut, rosemary, thyme. Um, none of those. <laughs> specifically uh, those words are in the sensory lexicon. Now, under herbal in the sensory lexicon, they do mention a mixture that involves thyme and some other stuff. But anyway, you know, that's fine uh, because honestly, do we care? We care about how it tastes, right? But it is good to have words that give us a clue when we're reading about a coffee, you know, before we've purchased it, does this sound like something I would like? Well, you know, I order whatever's new and I love to try it because I know that I usually, I can't tell from the description. Now, usually if it says cocoa or woody, um, something nutty, I usually like those. And I found now, you know, I used to think, oh, the ones that say cereal and fruity and whiny. No, I wouldn't like those. But in fact, I found some I like. So I just order them all and try them. I don't let the descriptions sort of sway me. Um, okay, so this is the Rio de Janeiro. Pretty box as usual. And, oh, so I was reading that um, people from Rio de Janeiro are called cariocas, and the carioca is also a coffee. It's an espresso with extra water added into it, um, and this coffee is supposed to be very similar to the Cafezinho do Brasil, which I reviewed, um, oh, I don't know, a month or so ago, maybe six weeks ago, um, and 
for that, it also says oh, sandalwood, walnut, rosemary, and thyme. So, yeah, let's let's see. Oh, so this is all uh, grown in Brazilian arabicas. It says. Um, now it says, drink it like a local, double your espresso with hot water. So, you know, some people add a little hot water, some people add as much hot water as you have espresso. Very pretty capsule. So I'll just put this back here, get my water heating up. Okay, all my Lungo cups are in the sink, so I'll use this one. And what I'm gonna do first is run it as an espresso. Now, while my machine's heating up, whoops, I just wanted to show you. Um, okay, so this is on Nespresso.com. They have got little interesting articles, okay? And basically, this is an article about how to taste coffee, okay? And this is very simplified, okay? But still, it gives you a nice idea. And if you search around on the Nespresso website, or if you're interested in a certain thing, for example, I what did I look up? I looked up, oh, Nespresso Tasting Guide. I just, you know, figured I want an espresso. I want to see, do they have a tasting guide? And that's what came up. So, you know, that was really neat. Okay, my um, machine is ready. So, in goes my capsule. Now, um, if you don't know, this flips up for fitting taller cups and I'm running it as an espresso. So first we'll take a look at that crema. Now this is, this is such a big cup for espresso that, um, you know, it's let that crema spread out so much. But still, you know, it's a pretty good amount. Oh, how do we evaluate the crema? I didn't even read that. Study it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. The bubbles should be small and numerous. Yep. Making a fine, dense crema. Um, okay. If the Okay. Actually, it's not all that helpful, but it's interesting to read. Okay. I always like to taste the crema. And all the time, it's always too powerful because it's got the concentrated oils that are in the coffee. So you want to give it a stir, kind of fold some of those back in. You know, if you let it sit, some people don't like coffee with crema. So if you let it sit, the crema's gone, those bubbles are gonna pop after a while and it'll all dissolve back in. On the other hand, very often, I will make what's called a cafe reverso. I put the milk in first, then I brew the coffee on top of it. And the crema mixed with that milk that's heating up and, you know, because the coffee's dropping into it, it's making the milk bubble up a little bit. It forms a really nice kind of a foam somewhere in between if you're frothing your milk and you're just having crema. Okay, the taste test. Oh, let me sniff. And as usual, I'm sorry. I, you know, I'm sure that it takes some sort of innate talent to be a taster of something, you know, an official taster. Just like not everybody can be an artist. Uh, I mean, everybody can be an artist, but you know, like not everybody say could be a portrait painter or something like that. I don't think just that anybody could be a coffee taster. I mean, I just, my nose is just saying, yep, yeah, smells like coffee. Now, could that talent, if I have any talent, be developed? I imagine, but I don't know. 
At 70 years old, I think that that ship has sailed. So, okay, I can tell you one thing for sure. Some coffees, when I taste them, make me feel like, you know, like my mouth wants to pucker up. They're astringent. And I read in the sensory guide, or sensory lexicon, that that is called drying, mouth drying. And that actually there is a way to um, measure that. There's a comparison using a certain amount of alum, which is, you know, makes your mouth feel really dry. So, hey, all along I actually did know something. This is not doing that to my mouth. This actually has a very nice flavor. You know what I'm going to do? Because it said to add, um, you know, some more water. I have not drunk that much out of it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead... You know, you don't have to have a capsule in here. You can get hot water just by closing your pixie. This is a pixie machine. Okay, I'm gonna stop it part way through because I did drink some of it. There we go. And by the way, I have my machine sitting on um, one of those um, cutting boards. You know, it's not wood. It's some sort of plasticky thing. So it's nice and smooth. So I can just slide the machine in and out easily. Okay. Now I'll give this a try. Let me mix it up some. So I think that if you, um, you know, lived in Brazil or something, or Portugal apparently where they do this too, because you know in Brazil they speak Portuguese. Anyhow, um, I think that you might get used to this as sort of your regular cup of coffee. It is, it's a little similar to a regular American cup of coffee, but it has so much more character to it. Um, now, I did read that if you want to add just a few drops of milk to it, that it can make it less, It well, I think they said less bitter or less acidy in the taste, um, but I don't know, I don't really find it bitter. However, I'm going to add just a few drops of milk to it, and you know, whoops just to see because you know while I've got it made here let me give this a try okay just a little bit okay that was like a few drops right okay okay here goes And that's nice too. You know, I gotta say, um, Nespresso, I think that you've made a, a good coffee here with this Rio de Janeiro Espresso. Um, yeah, I would give it a thumbs up. Would I buy it again? Um, okay, so I would say this. If I was not always trying new kinds of coffees um, so that, you know, I've got lots of coffee here to go through. If I just wanted to pick several coffees to have available um, and I wasn't doing, you know, reviews and stuff like that, if you could call these reviews. Um, yeah, I think I might get the Rio de Janeiro as a sort of standard with Napoli and Voluto, which I also really like. And I like um, Firenze Arpeggio also. So yeah, I think it, it might be one of my standards. It's different, but 
it's different in a nice way. Okay, there you have it. I hope you have a wonderful day. Yeah, I just got out of the shower before I, you know, some of you wondering what happened to your hair? Well, <laughs> it's wet. Okay, so listen, I hope you have a good day and you make good choices.